spend a little bit of time. I, I know some of you may not be able to stay for all three. Uh, if you can, I'd encourage you to do so. Uh, the first part, we're going to talk about uh, the Soldier for Life and Transition Assistance Program uh, from the Army's perspective. And then we have some folks here from the Centurion Military Alliance who are going to talk to us in the second hour about, uh, yeah, please come on down, about the services that they provide transitioning soldiers. And uh, they, it's a really great program that they put together. And I encourage you to stick around for that. It'll be very valuable, too. And then third, uh, we have a representative from the, uh, the Texas Veterans Commission. And so uh, I encourage you to stay for all those. So about, uh, about I guess it was about 10 years ago, I'm, I'm a, a, a reserve component soldier. I'm in the AGR program. Uh, I'm here as the, the reserve component advisor. And uh, I, got, I got tabbed, I got the rose pinned on me to be the, uh, the coordinator for transition assistance. But um, it's kind of appropriate because, as I say, about 10 years ago, I was on uh, an AGR tour. You come out of the drilling reserves, you go into an active component form for a while, and then you can get out or stay in. Uh, I made a choice. I thought, you know what? Uh, there's some things going on in my life, and I'm going to get out, and I'm going to go back into the reserve component. Uh, about 11 days after I transitioned, uh, my wife got really ill. And she went into the hospital for 14 days. She was in ICU. Nobody told me about some of the things that what you don't know, you don't know, right? If nobody explains it to you, you just don't know. I didn't know some things, specifically as it relates to uh, insurance. $50,000 later, all on me. Because somebody didn't tell me there was a program that I could buy into to make that transition. So we're fortunate because, that was an E6 at the time, but we're fortunate because, generally speaking, senior NCOs are kind of in the know. They have a lot of information that's provided to them. And they share that information with, with soldiers. But I can tell you this, I've seen senior NCOs that are transitioning that don't know. And so opportunities like this provide you um, a forum where you can get some information. Uh, as I always told my, soul, told my soldiers, you can sit down and go through three hours of, of briefings, and you're not going to remember it all. So I always encourage them, pick three things. Three things that you're going to hang on to that's important, that are important to you. If that's all you get out of it, then that's all you get out of it. But pick those three things, keep them in your, in your kit bag, and, and build on it later. Each time you get an opportunity, pick another three things, build on it. Now some of you are going to transition very quickly. I've got a list of everybody that's transitioning. I think we have about 11 or 12 of you that are within the next nine, 90 days. It goes up a little bit more from there and a little bit more from there. Some of you are, don't know if you're really going to transition right now. So this is a great opportunity. And I would ask that as you go back to uh, your offices and your, your sections, your areas, if you have soldiers, that are in that process, I don't know if I'm staying in, I don't know if I'm getting out, I just really don't know what I want to do. Share with them this one thing. The time to transition is not when it's time to transition. The time to transition is the day you get in the Army. It's a process. And it's a lot easier to make that transition when you've planned ahead. What's the saying? If you fail to plan, you plan to fail, right? So don't plan to fail. Fail a plan to succeed. If you do that a little bit at a time, inch by inch, it's a cinch, right? Yard by yard is hard. I hate things like that, but they're fun too. <laughs> um, so uh, keep that in mind as you listen. At least try to hold on to three things that are going to be of value to you. Um, so I'm grateful to have some of our civilian counterparts with this and our spouses. Very nice. Thank you. Because this is for you too. So with that said, I'll turn some time over to, uh, I think, like first, Doug Pilts, who's with the transition, uh, the transition services office he, offices here on post. They're going to kick us off, and we'll kind of go from there. So while I'm trading over, say what you okay. want to say. Real quick, I'm the Doug Pilts. I'm the transition service manager. I run the whole program here on Fort Bliss, the Soldier for Life Transition Assistance Program. I got two TSSs with transition service specialists who work for me. Uh, Kenny Pendleton, who's going to actually I brought him to two teams. He does all the. Tenant unit with Sergeant Major Academy is a tenant unit. 
uh, here, and then Rihanna Jackson, she does the all first armor division. So I'm gonna turn it over to Kenny. He's gonna do the briefing. Uh, I'll probably interject some, and then also we got from ACS. We got some spouses that uh, uh, Dina Garcia is gonna come up and talk a little about ACS and what programs they have. Also, because we partner together, they, she does a lot of things with the spouses side, and also a lot of job fairs. So, further ado, Kenny, I'll turn it over to you. Just, just before we get started, turn your cell phones down if you've got them. Have a Good afternoon, how y'all doing? Uh, my name is Kenny Pendleton. Uh, like uh, Mr. Pilt said, I'm one of the uh, transition service specialists uh, working here at the Soldier for Life Transition Assistance Program. How many of y'all heard of ACAP? Raise your hand. We are no longer called ACAP. That's a thing of the past. We still hear it every day, and not just from Lauren Lisa Soldier, but for, from leaders also. So we're now Soldier for Life Transition Assistance Program, or SFL TAP. Uh, this is our agenda. We're going to talk a little bit about a uh, forklift tap overview of uh, the soldier life cycle, uh, the bow or veterans opportunity to work in career readiness standards, timeline guidance, the standard five-day curriculum, the individual soldier responsibilities, unit responsibilities, on-program losses, dealing with chapters and things like that, CSPs or career skills programs, uh, major upcoming events, how to register for the program, and then our contacts, and then we're going to go over some questions. Uh, we are located at building 503. We are right across the street from the Welcome Center. If you all don't know where the Welcome Center is, it's off of Pershing Road. Right across the street, we are located on the third floor. But actually, the whole building uh, is SFL TAP. Uh, we have a lot of different entities and resources, not just available to soldiers, but their family members also. Uh, right here, we, got, we, we cover career counseling, uh, all the way down to connecting soldiers with technical training. Uh, and colleges for higher education exploration and all these different entities at the bottom here. We have uh, Department of Veteran Affairs, Department of Labor, Department of Homeland Security. We have a uh, CBP, a Customs Border Patrol recruiters in our building uh, that can uh, talk to us soldiers on a daily basis. Uh, United, uh, we got USO, Riley Point Six, uh, Texas Veterans Commission, and Texas uh, Workforce uh, Border Place. Okay, the soldier life cycle. The Soldier for Life process does not start at the end of the soldiers getting out. It starts when they first come in the Army. But we focus more mainly on number three, what we reintegrate strong. Our bottom line is to get a soldier a job when they get ready to get out the military. We want every soldier to get a job. However, we know that's not going to be possible. But we, we got all the resources in place that we can assist the soldier in, in their whole transition uh, writing resumes, doing interviews, things like that. But we want them to reintegrate strong back into the, to the civilian sector. Uh, this, is our, uh, this, this is our timeline right here. In a perfect world, we want every soldier that's transitioning out to start the process 18 months out. Now, we, have, we, we hear a lot of horror stories every day. Soldiers come up there and be like, no, they tell their chain of command that so when we start 18 months out, we, we, we no longer do anything at the units. That's not true. We want them to start 18 months out. What that is, they register, they go online, they do a briefing. It takes about 90 minutes. Uh, it briefs the soldier on all the, the benefits and things that are available to them as they leave the military. And at that point, after the 90 minutes, they have registered. That's what we mean. We want them to start the process 18 months out. Once they register, they see a counselor, and a counselor will set them up for the five-day curriculum workshop that it don't have to be right then, it could be later, but we want to get everything completed prior to 12 months to 90 days out. We don't want them waiting to the last minute. A lot of chains of command are not letting soldiers come to the class unless they're 90 days out. By that time, we have failed a soldier. Uh, we need to get them in. And get re our motto is come, go early, go often. So if you start at 18 months out, but we only need about maybe of the soldier's time, maybe 10 days out of that 18 months, and they could be complete with the process. When they get to the 90-day mark, they need to uh, be going to do their, their job interviews and things like that. So we want to get that start the process 18 months out, 
And this is mandated that they go through this Soldier for Life program. It's not our program that we, we make in you. This is a regulation that they need to go to this program. And they want to start 18 months all the way down to 90 days or uh, 30 days. This is what the five-day standard curriculum looks like. Day one, they do the transition overview. Talks about the, all the things that happen when they start the transition. Then it talks about the MOS crosswalk. What that does, it takes their military skills and it crosswalks them over to the civilian skills. So soldiers can see what they can qualify for and what they can do once they get out the military. And then Monday afternoon, they do the financial planning workshop. At that point, a lot of soldiers have a change of heart because they see how expensive it is going to be once they get out of the military. So a lot of times they re-enlist. At that point, the, the process stops for them. But if it doesn't, day two, three, and four, the DOL deployment workshop. This part can be waived. If you are retired with more than 20 years of active federal military service, this part can be waived. Or if a soldier has a job offer already, they can bring the job offer letter, and Mr. Pilch, he can, uh, he can go ahead and exempt them from that. Now, day five, VA benefits part one and part two. Most of the time, you want to go to this one right here. These two right here, day one and day five, you have to go to. Day two, three, and four can be waived. Just reiterating on day two, three, and four, most retirees, some will come up to me and say, I'm not working, I'm just going home fishing and everything else. Wasting time, they don't want to do that. However, you still can go through that. Uh, remember, social life, two years from now, if the retiree gets out, he can come back and we'll help him also through that process again. So just let you know that. Uh, and a soldier who does have a job offering, he doesn't have to go through that because he already got his job offering. But the soldiers still, if you're getting out, retiring, you can go through the whole process. However, retirees, if you don't want it, you can be exempt from it because you say, I'm not going to go to work, I'm going home to do a fishing, golf, or whatever. So just let you know that. Now, in a perfect world, we would like for the soldiers to go through all five days at once. However, it can be broken, it can be broken down. You can do day one, one week, you can come back and do day five, another time. But day twos, threes, and four have to be in order. They have to be in that, in that time frame right there. These are the individual soldier requirements. All of these things up here, the soldier have to have prior to getting out the military. I'm not going to read those. I'll let you all take a look at it. But these are the requirements. These are the career readiness standards that have to be done prior to the soldier getting out. Now, some of these things over here, like the entrepreneur track, uh, those are optional. They don't have to do that. They can either go to school, they can work, or they can get a job, or they can go to, uh, do the entrepreneur. But that's optional. These right here, optional. I don't know if you got a point on here. Oh, no. Okay. These right here, some of these are optional right here. Accessing higher education, vocational uh, technical training, that's optional. But these over here, they must do these things right here. Any questions? Somebody's prepared. Thanks. All right. All right. All these things, they will they will get all of these things when they go through the five day workshop. Those are deliverables that they will receive. These right here, accessing higher education, entrepreneur track, these things are optional. They don't have to do those. And these are the unit responsibilities. Uh, appoint a transition representative for each unit. We're still working on this. Uh, it's been, uh, the CG told every unit that they will have a representative uh, for us so they can uh, uh, have the soldiers uh, come through there. Now, if you have a soldier that's chaptering, we have soldiers come up a chapter as if it's escorting a chapter. Not supposed to be like that. Uh, but we, but Trust me, we see a lot of stuff come through there. Uh, but if they're chaptering, uh, make sure they have escorts. Uh, the escorts need to be there with them. Uh, and then the units provide monthly soldier status based off previous uh, commander's report uh, scorecard. Ensure the soldiers update the individual development plan, and they'll do that once they see a counselor. So after they do the registration part, they'll see a counselor that's going to set them up uh, for um, for their five-day workshop. Now, a lot of times we have soldiers come through there and the units pull them out of class. 
They pull them out because they have a urinalysis, or they pull them out because they have gate guard. Once they're in the program and they're going through the classes, they're not supposed to be pulled out of class. The commanders and the first sergeants, uh, they're aware of the soldiers, whereabouts, so they shouldn't pull them out of class, but we still deal with that on a, on a weekly basis. And when they do that, uh, we send them to Mr. Doug. Doug called the units, and uh, it's his call if the soldiers stay into the class or not. Okay, and these are the things right here. Now, at the end of the five-day workshop, they have a new thing that says we just, it just implemented in November. It's called the E-form. Uh, the soldiers, commanders, will get this E-form, and they have to e uh, digitally sign it, and then send it back, and when the soldier get ready to clear, uh, they will get that form. The soldier won't, they won't be able to clear without that E-form. Okay, Real quick on E-form, all you soldiers, make sure you have the right email for your commanders, because a lot of times if you don't, but soldiers, when you go in to register, you put the wrong commander in there, or the wrong name of the commander, and I know sometimes in that process you might have a, a command, a change of command. So you need to go back in there. Trust me, I'm getting commanders saying, hey, I'm not getting deformed. The reason why we go back in, the soldier didn't put the right commander in there. So just let know, as you go in to register, make sure you put your right commander, whoever your commander is, in that uh, box. Okay, now we're gonna talk about unprogrammed losses. Immediately when a soldier or when a chain of command knows a soldier is getting ready to get chaptered, they need to send that soldier to us immediately. A lot of times we get soldiers that are coming up there and they don't have time. They're getting out within seven days, so they don't really have time to do this. But it's mandated by Congress. Now, you can also do this online on JKO. Um, it takes about two days to complete that process. But we want the soldiers to come through the program face to face so they can get a better picture of what they, what they are entitled once they get out of the military. And we know, I, I know myself, soldiers come through that's getting out, they're not getting out on good terms, but it's still mandated by Congress that they come through this program. The reason I put this slide up here basically for because some of you might not hear get medical discharge or whatever, you still gotta go through the process. All soldiers have to go through this process. So I just wanna put this up there I'll do anything I can to help you go through the process with the command or the soldiers to make sure it happens. That's why I put it in there. We're having some issues. Uh, I did brief the Deputy Commander General support this morning on the same issue. So I just want to make sure anything we can do to help you, we're there to help you. We're your team. So just let us know if you, some of you might have to get medical as we, you know, sometimes you get medical to start because of some issues. We just want to let you know that you still got the process and we still help you try to get employment. So just let you know. Okay, now we got the Career Skills Program, bless you. We have a program that's been brought to Fort Bliss, and it's all over the United States right now. Uh, career Skills Programs, uh, and what they are, they are targeted uh, to get soldiers within the last 180 days to go through the programs, and once they finish the programs, when they get out, they have a job. So our mission is to make sure the soldiers can have meaningful employment once they step out into the civilian sector. Now, we have, uh, we have three on post right now, about to get the fourth one right here. Um, we have Airstreams, uh, we have Hiring Our Heroes, we have Phoenix Trucking, and we have SAP, which is a, a software program company. Uh, Airstreams, uh, these are, this is a, a seven week program that's designed to uh, help soldiers learn about the, uh, the, cell, the construction of uh, cell phone towers and wind turbines. It's a seven week program. Once they finish, they have a job uh, once they step out, out of the military. Hiring Our Heroes is a 12 week program. Uh, deals with uh, corp, uh, it's like a fellowship. They go and do like an internship at these different places. And if, once they get out, uh, they can add that to their resume. So they may get hired with the company that they did the internship with. They may or may not, but they may uh, get hired. Uh, then we have Phoenix Trucking. Um, they just started uh, last month, and they they got their first class going on right now. And uh, once they get out, once they finish, they'll hit the ground running. They already have a job. Cool. And then you got SAP, which is a software program company. They're coming in, um, and they're going to be. Uh, they started on the 17th through May 17th. Right now, uh, they got their first class going. They got 12 applied, eight uh, enrolled. Now, 
the commanders have the authority to approve or disapprove. However, if the commanders do disapprove, it goes all the way up to the CG, and the CG wants to know why uh, this soldier is being disapproved. Now, if a soldier's getting out um, on a bad conduct discharge, say for instance, um, if they're flagged, they cannot attend these programs, okay? They have to be in good standings in order to uh, 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 attend these programs. And right now, uh, training events, Airstreams has already done four classes. Uh, applied, 75 applied, 10 was denied, six, 65 enrolled, 65 completed, and 54 job offers already. And then hiring a hero, they only have one, one cohort, uh, 21 applied, eight denied, 13 enrolled, nine completed, and nine had job offers. Real quick on the job offers, actually in Airstreams, almost all of them have job offers. Uh, they're actually, 54 have actually got jobs. The other ones might not accept a job yet, so everyone who's gone that program so far has been offered a job. Uh, just to let you know about Phoenix Trucking, they're actually, when you go in that program, you're guaranteed you graduate on Friday, you start working for them on Monday. So, and it's a 100%. Uh, also, they bring five other different uh, trucking companies in, which I've never seen this before, who are their uh, competitors. The brief, you also, if you're going through that program, they actually stay in the program and they can go ahead and go, if they got better benefits for another drug, they're okay with them going to that program too. So it's 100% for them if they go in that program right now. Uh, another one we're talking about also is uh, uh, Caliber Collision, uh, hoping that come online and they're gonna fund the whole process. They, it won't cost the soldier anything. A lot of these programs here now is taking six months of GI Bill 911 for it, most of them. Phoenix Trucking, though, they actually give the soldier, if they go to work for Phoenix Trucking, they get that money back. It's $6,500. They pay you back uh, when they graduate, when they start working for them. So it's a pretty good program. It's a pretty good program. Also, I don't know if you talked about the information DUI piece yet. Yeah, you, go, you, 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 you want me to? Yes, yeah, sir. Okay, real quick, also, they just signed that the uh, Department of Army permits uh, DUI for 120 days because there's other programs, GSPs at Fort Hood, Fort Lewis, JBLM. Uh, other places that if soldiers want to go to them and a command supports them, they can go to PY up to 120 days. And most programs within that four months, and they'll they'll be able to go there. You know, for PY, soldiers have got to pay their way up there. However, most units like here, what we're setting up with the garrison sergeant major, that the soldier we can put them in bills here, so it won't cost them a hotel room. We can put them around in the installation, so they they'll get in here and do the class and basically food, so it wouldn't, the cost would be more down. Great programs. Uh, right now, we're working more uh, in reference to all of them, just so we can help soldiers get jobs. But the only thing, remember, I call them kind of electives. Chain of command has to let the soldier because they're on active duty still, going to these programs. So, you, for airstreams, for example, you're going to lose a soldier for seven weeks. He's going to be there. That's his place of duty. Commander signed off on it, and said that they can be there. Same with the uh, Phoenix, it's eight weeks. They're there for eight weeks, so. Uh, just let you know that, but the commanders, the soldiers have to bring their MFR back to them, get it signed, and if the commander signs it, then the soldiers, that's where it's supposed to be, and they'll put it, they'll enroll him into the program, him or her into the program. So we got some good, pretty good programs. We're getting more. Uh, so we're doing everything we can to get soldiers jobs when they transition out of the military. And like Kenny said earlier, if they realist, good for me. We win win. We keep in the army. Or we give them a job, but when they get out, they transition to the civilian world. So, uh, just to let you know that. And then we got our prospect CSP, which is one force um, trying to come online. Uh, what they do, they do the background checks. Uh, so we're trying to get them uh, online uh, here pretty quick. Uh, these are the uh, the updates right here: the start dates and the end dates for Airstreams, Phoenix, SAP, and hiring our heroes. We put this on the chain of command, brief the chain of command so they'll know these different dates because that was a big thing. We want to know when we can plug out, especially if you got training, plus you go training or if you're deploying, they can kind of plug it in when they can let their soldiers go to that if they're going down range, if they're going to the employ. That's why I want to correlate back to the 18 month piece. Uh, let these guys go to, you know, you can do the registration, get all that, do your. Uh, individual and collective training, NTC, JRTC, or here, if you deploy, go to the deployment, 
and then come back about 90 days out from that, then you start this process. And also it gets you out there if you can go to CSPs, your commands will know that. So that's why it's important to try to start your process out at 18 month mark. Uh, right now our big numbers is zero 90 days when people register. And give soldiers, if you guys are, how many is getting out in the next 18 months, if I might ask? Have you registered? See, half, about two people in this whole class is registered. Uh, so that's my point with that. And like I said, if you stay in the Army or you retire, get out of the Army, process will help you do that process. We got great counselors over there. All you got to do is go online, sign up, uh, call uh, Crystal or Amanda up there. They'll set you up an appointment and they'll ask you when you want to go to it. Because you change man is all depends. If you want to start class on Monday, if we got class going, the only time we don't have class, the five day curriculum, is we have a federal holiday that week. We won't have a class for that. Like last week, we had a uh, uh, federal holiday, so we did. But we're in class now. I don't think we have a federal holiday for until Memorial Day or so. But, anyways, we'll work with you, whatever you want to put them in class, whatever it is. And get back to the five day curriculum, especially if you're a leader. I know a lot of times you can't take off for a whole week. I've already said this to you. We can set it up. Uh, one week you go day one here, another day we go day two if we have to. Even though Kenny said go two, three, and four consecutively, I'll even make arrangements that you guys go each day separately if we have to. To make it so we have a, if you're in a leadership position, you might not be able to do that. You might not be able to go five days. Most soldiers uh, uh, usually be able to go five days to change man and let them go. So that's why I'm just letting you both sides. Leaders in here and also soldiers. Uh, just make sure you uh, register and uh, we'll take care of you and get you in the class as soon as you can go to the class. It's funny when I uh, have a soldier come in and say, hey, my, I need to get in class right away. I say, okay, we'll sign you up today. Oh, my team fan said, no, I can't start today. Well, why did you tell me you want to start today? That's why you did. And then just come over there. If you've already <coughs> cleared three chain man, let us know and we'll put it in the day you want to go. So we're doing everything we can to help you guys. Okay, these are the, um, the, the contacts if you want to contact uh, any of the CSP coordinators. And before I go any for, further, I'm going to ask Ms. Dina Garcia to come up and uh, talk about some issues, so things with the ACS and, uh, and the spouses. Real quick, I'm going go back to this before the starts. This is the two coordinators you got. If you want any more information, they can help you get all the MFRs and all that and set up. And also, we need to set up with a recruiter here on the installation for some of the CSPs to help you. But that's their data. And also, Sergeant Major has all these slides, so we can give them to you so you don't have to be writing everything down. If you have, you can print them, send them to you or give them to you. It's okay. I think Sergeant Major, you, you'll do that. Now you don't have to write everything down. Okay, go ahead. Sorry. Good afternoon. I'm Dina Garcia. I'm the Employment Readiness Program Manager at Army Community Service. So as Doug was telling you, we, where Soldier for Life works with the soldiers and family members, we work with the spouses that are looking for employment. We help spouses that are just transitioning here to the area or if you're getting ready to have a transition in life period. Um, in order to come to employment readiness, your first step is an orientation and that's held every Wednesday from 10 to 11.30. After the, uh, you come through the orientation, you're gonna get a one-on-one -on -one appointment with one of my specialists. And that's where they're gonna sit down and talk to you about your, the individual career plan and what, you, what you're looking forward to doing. If you're looking for employment here in El Paso or if you're looking for in another area, we're gonna help you make that connection in that area. We have several workshops that we offer. We help with federal resumes, civilian resume, interviewing skills, um, the whole nine yards. Uh, so if you are looking for employment, you definitely want to come over to Employment Readiness. Um, we, again, we help you spouses, retirees with your job search. Uh, we also, uh, we have two hiring fairs that we do each year. We have one in February that we just did, and then another one in August. And just like a Soldier for Life, we work closely with Hiring Our Heroes. They will come and do a hiring fair specifically for spouses, but it's well open to everybody. So in addition to the summit um, in March, there will be another hiring fair coming up in May. And that will be the 9th and the 10th of May also. So make sure you mark that on your calendars in addition. Real quick on job fairs, my, my plan is to try to do one in a quarter because most jobs about that 90 day point where everybody who comes there wants to hire you and not job fair, I want you to get a job. That's what it's for. So right now they do two. I'm doing a big one. He's going to talk about that here in a minute. 
uh, then I want to do another one. So about every 90 days, every quarter, so it gives so much opportunity because that's when the employers really want you. Because they want they can come to work for me. We can come to work. If you're six months out or a year out, they're gonna say, "Hey, I need you today." So that's why I'm trying to set up every quarter, 90 day piece to get uh, because when we have the job here, here what I, my plan is, is the employers have a resume. You have a resume. They interview you there or they offer you a job there. That's our goal to get you guys jobs or who's ever getting out of the military. Uh, have a job when you take this one off and like maybe I took it off and went into this uniform as soon as I got it on. Uh, so just let you know that. Okay, uh, we have a big event coming up on the 22nd and 23rd of this month. Uh, it's a National Transition Summit. Uh, it's mandatory um, register registration for anyone who's 18 months and below. That's out. 18, 18 months out, you need to register for this event. How many have registered by chance? Or how many even knew about this? <laughs> wow. They're not advertised very good, I guess. But just like so you know, this is a, a hiring fair, a big one. I'm expecting 4,000 soldiers at this. Uh, I can't go down a little bit, but 22nd or 3rd. If you haven't registered and you fall in that window, you need to get on uh, the line. Uh, we got a QR code there. You put on your phone, you register within about, I think about two minutes, yeah. maybe. And it's the 22nd, 23rd at the Centennial over here, uh, starting at registration. If you haven't registered, registrate. it starts at 8 to 9, and the program starts at 9 o'clock. But we're going to have two separate register. It's a lot easier to go straight in. If you have register, you go to a different line to register online. But uh, yeah, if you're in that window, how many was in that window? Zero to 18 months? OK. You all need to register on that. Uh, so, and you do it right here at the these Adam, because I know you guys all kinds of computers up here. You got computer labs and everything. <coughs> so, OK. OK, uh, again, like I said, this is mandatory if you're 18 months out. Um, it's going to be at Centennial the 22nd, 23rd. We're going to have, uh, we're looking at about 120 employers uh, that's going to be there, uh, that's going to be ready to hire, probably up down the spot. <coughs> so, uh, if you haven't been through the program, uh, you need to, if you need to get your resume done, you need to start contacting us so we can get you squared away uh, for, this, uh, for this big event that's coming up. Real quick, Dina who just talked, she does resumes help too. So just as us, us, she has people to help resumes, we got people to help you write resumes and all that. We'll get it set up also at the job, at this fair. I'm gonna have computers outside because I, every job might have different words you gotta put in there. So you can change your resume. I'm having computers so you can change your resumes and give it uh, your resume to whoever you're interested in. And just like to go back to 120 employers, kind of break it down in three different type groups. We're gonna have access, job seekers who's gonna hire you. Plus we got some education if you want higher education for you there. Also, uh, entrepreneurs if you want to start a business on yourself. So it's kind of three folds. We're gonna have all that type of individuals there for the job here. So. Uh, some of you probably know what you want to do after you get out. Some just get if you're retired. Some might just say I don't want to work no more. That's okay. Some might want to open their own business, and we got all that that help you also. And with the chamber here, we got people who can actually help you because funding is the biggest thing when you go into job fair, basically. So, uh, or in your own job marketing. So, uh, I just want to throw that out to you also. But this is a big event. Uh, hope you all get there and, and register. And like I said, it's a two day event, the first day. Uh, Kenny's going to go over the agenda a little bit, I think. Okay. And it's just, it's just not for uh, military, it's for uh, spouses also. So the spouses can also register and, uh, and come to this event. <clears throat> uh, these are going to be uh, some of the guest speakers and VIPs. We have uh, the Texas Secretary of State, Mr. Rolando Pablo, is going to be the guest speaker on day one. We're also going to have um, the Texas, Work, for, Texas Workforce Commissioner uh, representing employees, Ms. Ruth Hughes, who's going to speak. Uh, the DCGS, uh, General Mark Landis is going to, uh, going to do the, um, the welcome, and not the welcome, but the uh, introduce the guest speaker and some remarks. Colonel Hester will be uh, opening, doing the opening ceremony uh, and, doing, uh, and introducing the, uh, the DCGS. And then we're going to have the Deputy Assistant Secretary for Veterans Employment Training U.S. Uh, Department of Labor, Mr. Sam Schellenberger, going to be the guest speaker on day two. Uh, this is how you register uh, for the Soldier for Life. Uh, you go to this website right here, and 
go ahead and uh, put the information in and go ahead and register. And these are our contacts. We have Mr. Doug Phillips, which is the Transition uh, Service Manager, Ms. Rihanna Jackson, the other GSS, and myself. Uh, are there any questions? Real quick, going back to Summit a little bit. On the Summit, we're going to have some work groups also. There's going to be like eight work groups on day one after the opening ceremony. We had guest speakers and all that. And I airmarked it. We got for medical, we got federal employment, we got uh, uh, law enforcement, IT, logistic, maintenance kind of for here. And they're going to have actually speakers in there. So and it's going to be an afternoon of day one. And you can actually sign up to go to three different ones because we set it up last year, you only go to one. But a lot of soldiers don't know what they really don't want to don't know what they want to do yet. So they, they can go to three of these different career uh, fields if they want. If they're interested in medical, they can go to that one. And next hour we get to go for 50 minutes out to the next one. So you can go up to three of them. Like I said, I got eight different workshops going on that day, and that's kind of the end of day one. And then that evening. Uh, from 1730 to 1930, it's a, I call it an icebreaker, but it's a social with job seekers there and all the soldiers who want to be there, you can talk to them that evening also. And then day two goes into, like I said, the guest speaker a little bit, then the job fair actually hiring piece is from 13 to 1600. And if we need to go longer, we have more interested in that, we'll go to 17 or whatever we need to, but right now it's at 13, 1600. So that's the job fair, and I hope all you had your hands up Register after you're done here, and I appreciate it. But anyways, uh, any other any questions? <clears throat>